If you're a digital marketer or you have a website that's getting any amount of traffic, I'm going to show you a mathematical concept about conversion rate that 99% of people with websites and in digital marketing don't really fully understand and it's going to be super, super useful for you. If you understand this concept, and anybody can, it's gonna be very simple math, you'll be able to seriously improve your conversion rate um, and it'll be, you'll, your website will be much, much more effective. Uh, but first, you have to understand that there are three specific cardinal sins of web design. Four out of five websites have this, have, are missing out on a couple, two, two out of three of these serious issues. And I know this because I've managed the websites and the digital marketing campaigns for over 500 companies over the last six years, including Forbes Magazine, AMC Networks, the International Culinary Center, and many, many other ones. So what are those three cardinal sins? The first cardinal sin is knowing when to write long form copy and when to write short copy, okay? Most people don't understand this. There are very specific rules. Certain pages will convert better if you have very little text, very little information, fewer images and videos, and certain pages need a lot more information, long form copy, more text, more words, more images, uh, more reviews, etc. And this could spell the difference between success and failure with regards to conversion rate. The second one is you need a template, a framework for actually writing framework for your information. You need to know how to lay out the information on the page. You need to know about information architecture. You need to know how to write long form copy, how to write short form copy, where to put different elements on your page, front loaded social proof. That's a very, very important element. The third one is being able to diagnose quickly clarity issues. And when I say quickly, I mean within 10 minutes. You need to be able to have a, um, a structured testing framework for figuring out what areas of your website are frustrating users and are turning them away from your products. You have to be clear with your message within five seconds. I have a training coming up and you can register now for the live online training. It's gonna be a live training that I walk you through each one of these three concepts. I teach them in detail. The training is absolutely free. It's about 45 minutes to an hour long and I encourage you very, very much um, to sign up for it. A lot of people have, have attended these live trainings and I teach you step by step exactly how to solve these three issues. I've managed 500 websites. 90% of them, four out of five of them, have been missing out, have been, um, have had two out of these three sins on their website. And these are the three cardinal sins and if you could fix two out of three of them, your conversion rate will skyrocket and your business will significantly improve. Now, let's talk about some math, because I want to walk you through this mathematical concept of conversion rate, which will prime you. In order to go about fixing these three things, you need to first fundamentally understand the mathematics behind conversion rate, and it's going to be pretty simple. You'll be able to follow along, even if you're not a math expert in any way, but you need to understand the concept first, and that is profit. Your profit is more sensitive to, in, to a conversion rate improvement than your revenue is. Your profit is more sensitive than revenue. I'm gonna show you an exact example about how that works. Now follow along with me. Um, we're gonna go through all the numbers together. I'm gonna to take this page down. And if you're uh, watching, don't forget to register for the training. Click the link above or below. Follow along with me. And um, we're going to go through an actual scenario together, okay? So let's just call this uh, conversion rate conversion rate profit, okay? And I'm gonna use big whole numbers so we're not gonna be stuck with any complex math. Now, if your website, we'll make an example where a website that's, let's say, getting 2,500 visitors a month or so, but your website may be getting 25 visitors a month or 50 visitors a month or 50,000 visitors a month. It doesn't matter. The same concept applies and you need to understand this math so you're, you'll be able to go about fixing the conversion rate on your website in a way that actually inflates profit um, in a way that inflates profit more than revenue gets inflated. It's really, really cool. Okay, so um, we're gonna have two scenarios. We're gonna, we're gonna walk out a scenario before you've improved conversion rate and after you've improved conversion rate. So over here, we'll just write out, let's say, um, 
original conversion rate. Okay, I'm gonna make a line down the middle here and across here. And then we'll have a new conversion rate, right? Because we're assuming that you're going to do some work on your landing page, right? You're gonna fix two out of the three of the cardinal sins and you're gonna have a better conversion rate. A greater percentage of people coming to your site are going to be converting, right? That's sort of how this works. Okay, so let's fi finish drawing this out. So we're gonna have um, some metrics here, right? Pretend you're looking at a Google Analytics or a Google Ads dashboard. All right, so we have the total amount of visitors, okay? Then we have your conversion rate, the percentage of visitors that are taking the action that you want them to take, whether that be a sale, a form submission, a phone call, whatever it may be, right? So now, now that we know these two, we can get the total volume, the number of conversions, okay? Once you have conversions, we wanna know your revenue. And we're gonna just give an example of your product revenue or your, if you're, this is good for B2B or lead gen, it doesn't matter, okay? But here's where it gets very important. You have fixed costs and you have variable costs in your business, okay? Um, fixed costs are things like your rent, are things like your ad clicks. Most likely that would be considered a fixed cost. Variable costs are the costs that scale every time you bring on a new client or every time you sell a product. So if you have to ship an item, that means shipping is a variable cost because every time you sell a new product, you have to pay for shipping. But every time you sell a new product, as I'm gonna show you here, you don't necessarily have to pay for more clicks to your website or more traffic to your website. And this is the concept that you really need to understand, the difference between shared variable costs and fixed costs. So we're gonna say, we're gonna give an example with your fixed cost. And then we're gonna have variable cost down here. Okay, and we're gonna put this across, and we're gonna put this across. I know it's not so straight, but it's okay. Um, and we're gonna repeat the exact same thing. In this column, I'm gonna grab a different color, let's say. Okay, so we're gonna have visitors. Okay, conversion rate. Is this the improved column? your volume of conversions, which you get from those two numbers, your revenue, which I'm gonna show you how to figure out, your fixed cost, and your variable costs, okay? Now this is a chart that you guys should all be able to figure out on your own. Um, and I'm gonna, and you could screenshot this or come back to this video whenever you'd like. Okay, so we have the same thing in two different scenarios. In one scenario, we have our original conversion rate. And in this scenario here, we have our updated conversion rate. Okay, now let's put in some numbers. Now we have to make a couple of assumptions, right? One, we need to figure out how much of that conversion rate improved. So in my experience, you typically see a improvement of conversion rate by 2x, 100% increase in conversion rate when you fix the cardinal sins on your website. So we're gonna put in, in some variables over here. Up here are some variables. Conversion rate improved, let's call that 100%. And this is, an, um, I just worked on a landing page for a client where we improved the conversion rate by 600%, six times the conversion rate. But let's just go conservative, right? 100% um, and we'll need to know your, your margin right, in order to get to um, our profit numbers. So let's say your profit margin is something like um, 30%, okay? These are just variables and you can put this into a spreadsheet. And then you need to know your LTV, lifetime value of a customer. So if you sell a product, let's just go with $80, for example, okay? Let's just say every time you sell something, it's 80 bucks, or every time you bring on a new client, you average $80 in, in revenue. Um, Okay, now we have some, and this will change based on your business, right? So you can plug this in. We could, you could always go with a, if you're modeling this out, you could always go with a, a, an expected increase of 100% in conversion rate, but you could be more conservative or more aggressive. These two metrics here, margin and LTV, should be the metrics of your own business. Um, so now let's put in some actual numbers here. Okay, so say we have, um, we're gonna make an example of 2,500 visitors. 
Okay, so you have 2,500 visitors. And the thing to really understand is visitors stay the same, okay? Visitors stay the same in this example because we're not buying more clicks. I'm gonna teach you how to make more money from your website without actually paying for more traffic. That's what's so beautiful about this, right? In the training, you could sign up for it. I'm gonna teach you how to make more money without buying more clicks. This is the beauty of conversion rate optimization. So now let's say, give an example conversion rate. We'll go with 7%, okay? That's our conversion rate. Um, our original conversion rate was 7%. So if we were getting um, 100 visitors to our site, 7% were buying or 7% were filling out a form if that was our conversion rate that we're tracking. Um, and our conversion rate here would be what? 14%, right? Because we're just doubling. Because of this variable here, our conversion rate increases 100%. In our example, it goes from 7% to 14%. Now conversions, what is 7% of 2,500? You guys should be able to ballpark this. If you're, not, if you're not mathematically oriented, it's okay. You could use a calculator. But 7% of 2,500 is 175, okay? That means in this scenario, with 2,500 visitors and a 7% conversion rate, we're getting 175 conversions out of these 2,500 visitors. Now, in our improved scenario, what is our total number of conversions? We've doubled our conversion rate. And when you double the conversion rate, you get a doubled volume of conversions. So we improved conversions and un conversions and we're at 350. Okay, so we have 350. Now we need to figure out, we're still filling out this metrics here, right? We need to fill out revenue. So revenue is simply taking our conversions and multiplying it by our LTV, right? $80 in our example. Now you could use a calculator or you could ballpark or get the right number. You take the total amount of conversions and you multiply, you multiply that by $80. And that comes out to $14,000 $14, in revenue, okay? Now you guys should be able to get the revenue over here. We've doubled conversions and we know that 175 times 80 is 14,000. 350 times 80 is gonna be double this, right? So we're at $28,000 in revenue with an improved conversion rate. Okay, now here's where we, now here's where things get interesting. Fixed costs, okay? Like your rent, your, what you're paying for Facebook marketing or your Google Ads campaigns or you're paying your SEO vendor, you're paying your hosting provider, things that don't change if you sell an additional product. Now, it's true that if your client business grows and you're a bigger company, you might have to move into a new office and then your rent will go up, but within a certain range of sales, certain fixed costs stay the same. They don't change. So in our example, let's just put in, uh, to make the math easy, you have fixed costs per month of $5,000, okay? And that's gonna be the same, remember, because the fixed cost, as you sell more, we went from 175 sales to 350 sales, right? So the idea is there are certain costs, like your rent, your overhead, your hosting provider, your CRM, your ad clicks, right? Because we, we got 2,500 visitors. The visitors didn't stay the same. I didn't pay Google or Facebook or Bing or my SEO vendor a single extra penny because we have 2,500 visitors in both scenarios. So our fixed costs over here is also, what is it gonna be? Does anybody know? $5,000, okay? Now your variable costs, um, that's where things will scale, right? So for our variable costs, we're just gonna look at a 30% margin, right? So 30% of what? 30% of our revenue is going to be our variable costs. So that is 30% of 14,000 is 42, 40, 14, uh, it's $4,200. You can check the math, but I believe that's correct. Okay, so our variable costs here, and that will change based on this variable up here. So the idea is like, okay, how much is the cost? If I sell something for $100, what are my costs associated with that? Do I have to pay shipping? What is the cost of producing the product, right? It's your margin. If I have a client service business like I do, I run an agency, I need to know that every time I bring on a client, I have to put employees that I pay a salary a few hours of their time a day into managing that client, and that is a variable cost. These are the costs that go up with every single purchase, with every single client, with every single customer, with every single product, those go up, and you, could use, you can get that ballpark number by looking at your margin. Um, now, what's your variable cost in this example? Now, remember, fixed costs stay the same. Variable costs will go up. 
if you are servicing either 175 leads or clients or products, and now you're servicing 350 leads, clients, or products, your variable costs are gonna go up. So now it's gonna be double, right? Because we had, you could do the math a couple different ways. One, you could just double this, which is gonna get us to $8,400 in variable costs, or you could do the margin out of $28,000. But let's just double this, it's the same thing, and we get to $8,400, okay? So this is what the scenario looks like. Now let's take a look at actual profit. Now, down here we're gonna put the profit of these two scenarios, okay? Now to calculate profit, obviously we just take our revenue and we subtract our fixed cost and our variable cost, right? So our fixed and variable cost together over here is 9,200. You subtract 9,200 from $14,000, right? And what do you get? Do the math. $4,800, okay? That is our profit in this scenario. Now, we can't just double it here, remember, right? We can't just go ahead like we did to conversion rate and conversions and fixed costs because there's a variable cost difference. Our variable cost over here is $8,400. So we need to do the math separately. So I'm gonna put profit here and you guys can do the math. Remember what we do, right? We take revenue, $28,000, subtract $5,000, $23,000, and subtract $8,400, what does that get us to? It gets us to $14,600 in profit in this scenario, okay? So what's really fascinating here is that we didn't pay any more money for marketing. Now remember, this will change, your, your margin might be different, your lifetime value might be different, and the amount of traffic you're getting might be different, okay? But the concepts are all fundamentally the same. Now how much did we increase, now remember when I started this off, I told you that profit is more sensitive to conversion rate improvement than revenue is. So let's take a look at how much revenue increased, okay? What percentage of revenue did revenue, well, what percent increase did we have? Revenue went from 14,000 to 28,000, okay? So revenue increased, how much percent? 100% increase in revenue. Profit, increased how much percent? We went from 4,800 to 14,600, okay? So you could ballpark that, but the, let me just think, it's 203 or 204, probably around 204%, I think, okay? So while we, we moved revenue, we doubled revenue, right? We, almost tripled profit, okay? We almost tripled profit when we doubled revenue. And that's, and the reason that happened, we almost, and we could just look at the numbers also. So how much additional revenue in dollars, right? If you wanna look at it, it's good to look at it in dollars too, because when you're explaining this to clients or you're looking at this yourself, um, it's good to have these numbers clear. So revenue went up how much in dollars? What's 14,000 to 28,000? We know it doubled, so we increased revenue by $14,000. Now that's very good, right? It's good to um, increase revenue by that much. Profit, but revenue is not the final number, right? Revenue is not what's fundamentally the most important thing. Profit went up 204%. Um, you could also just take it from here, uh, $9,800, which is almost tripling profit. Um, so that's like a really um, unbelievable mathematical sequence to understand. And it all really comes down to your fixed costs staying the same as you scale your business, right? Which is why conversion rate optimization is the most financially successful thing you could do for your website. And again, it doesn't matter if you're getting, um, if you're getting 25 visitors a month, five visitors a day or 500 visitors a month, right? If your conversion rate right now is hovering around one, 2%, 3%, you can get that to 6%. It's all about the three cardinal sins. Um, you, and, and we didn't pay, we didn't pay for more traffic. Think about a couple things here. One, conversion rate just, in, just went up by, just doubled, right? That might be aggressive. You could lower that a little bit and you could see how these numbers change. You could put this all into a Google Sheet or an Excel doc. You look at your margins, you look at your revenue. In a consulting business, your revenue per, per deal might be $1,000, I don't know, it might be five grand, 
whatever it is. But when you improve your conversion rate, you can get the same amount of visitors and all of these results. You went from a profit of 4,800 to 14,600, an additional profit of $9,800, which is almost tripling your profit, a 204% increase in profit, a 100% increase in revenue. And as you fix the conversion rate, the, mo the thing that is really fundamental to understand, you're making more revenue, but your revenue is proportionate to the increase in conversion rate. Your profit is not because there are fixed costs. Your profit inflates, your profit is more sensitive to an improvement in conversion rate than your revenue is. That is what's so fundamentally important. Now, again, going back, um, this is something which is really cool. It's a very simple mathematical concept. This is exactly how to break it down, how to, um, you should have this saved on your computer. You could have it, you could show it to your clients. I show it to clients all the time. Um, now, remember those three cardinal sins, okay? There is free online from the comfort of your own home training led by me, live, okay? I teach you those three cardinal sins. There's a link above or below this video where you could sign up to attend the training. It's 45 minutes long. And I'm gonna give you out um, a few different, really exciting bonuses when you join the training. You're gonna get a conversion rate uh, calculator that will, that will show you how to plug in different numbers and allow you to really do this formula with but many others really easily and in a more complicated way with more complicated businesses. You're gonna get that calculator for free. You're gonna get another calculator that walks you through the 10 most important formulas for analyzing the results of an ad campaign through Facebook ads or Google ads. You're gonna get a few different data exports and templates for um, running salespeople, uh, salesperson and customer support rep surveys. Um, you're gonna get a template for analyzing the improvement of click-through rate and how to model that and or how to analyze historic click-through rate. So you get a bunch of exciting calculators and templates just for coming to the, just for registering for the webinar. You're going to get all this stuff just for registering for the webinar. I'm going to email that all to you. So make sure you put in, when you register for the training, make sure you put in the proper, um, your, your actual email, your business email or, or any email that you have access to because you're going to get all these free bonuses. Um, there are five bonuses that are coming your way when you register for the training. Um, and the training is going to be great. We're going to deal with those three cardinal sins, right? What are those three again? When to write long form and short form copy. When your landing pages or website pages should be short, when they should be long, and I will teach you exactly how to figure that out. So you can look at every single page on your website and you can be like, oh, this content's got to go. I got to write this instead. And you'll know what to actually do. You'll understand how to step-by-step -step write that copy, information architecture, what to say in your headlines, your subheadlines, how to use images, what to do on your page, um, and how to diagnose the issues on your website within 10 minutes. So finding out what areas of your website are turning away your visitors, are turning off your customers, and are making people abandon and leave your site. These are customers that would have actually converted. So those are the three cardinal sins. I teach them to you in depth. This webinar is not a sales pitch, training is not a sales pitch. You have 45 minutes of really high level instruction that you could use immediately to go improve your conversion rate. And as we've uh, learned before, when you improve conversion rate, even by a little bit, your profit is going to skyrocket. You don't have to pay any more money for Google ads. People get addicted to buying traffic. Just improve your conversion rate. So if, you're, if two out of every 100 people coming to your website now are converting or come, becoming leads or sales or customers, which is, out of 100 people, two people, you could get that to six people, eight people, 10 people, a 10% conversion rate. It's very doable. You just need to know that your website, if you, especially if you're dealing with like a Wix or a Squarespace or a WordPress template or a Shopify template, these templates out of the box are built to look nice. They're built to sell templates. They're not built to sell the products that are being sold through these templates or the services being promoted and sold and advertised through these templates. You need to really know um, your own step. And I'm telling you, Four out of five people, I've dealt with 500 websites, 500 clients over the last six years, four out of five are, um, are committing the three cardinal sins. Four out of five are committing the three cardinal sins. If you could just fix two out of those three, there's no reason why you can't fix all three. It'll be very easy, it's immediate. The next morning, your conversion rate will be better. So if you could fix two out of the three cardinal sins on your website, your conversion rate will probably double. If not, it'll at least increase by 
Um, you'll be getting more leads and sales for the exact same amount of traffic. No more SEO. You don't have to put more money into it. And that stuff is good. I'm, I'm a Google Ads practitioner, Facebook ads. That stuff is good to get traffic if you know how to do it. But you could, you're could you leaving revenue on the table if you don't understand the three cardinal sins and, and make a commitment to stop committing those three cardinal sins. But you first need to know how to solve the problems. You will see the next sessions that I'm doing on the following page if you click the link. Um, thank you for watching this. I hope it's really helpful. Um, and I hope you can tell that I, that I love this stuff and I love teaching. My name is Isaac Gradansky, uh, the co-founder um, and CEO of Adventure Media. And this is what we do. Come to the training. I look forward to seeing you there.